Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are going to cover another library for data quality testing. Previously we have used PyTest to carry out data quality test. With PyTest we wrote our own functions to perform testing. The Great Expectations library has built-in functions to carry out the data quality test. You can check out the PyTest video if you want the background on the testing and how to set up testing framework for your Python ETL pipelines. Anyways, let's dive into great expectations. We will use Jupyter Notebook as an IDE. So let's open up Jupyter Notebook and start coding. As usual, the completed notebook is available on GitHub. Link is in the description below. At the top of the notebook, we import our libraries. And in this case, we are importing pandas and great expectations. And using pandas, we import our data set into a data frame. Let's preview the data frame to familiarize ourselves with the columns and their data types. In order to run great expectation test, we need to convert the pandas data frame to a great expectations data frame. And we can convert it with from underscore pandas function from the great expectations library. Let's go ahead and check the type of the data frame to make sure it is correct. Otherwise, we won't be able to run the following test on it. Our great expectation data frame is called my underscore df. And now we can call various built-in tests on this data frame. All the great expectation tests start with the keyword expect. And there are various built-in tests and you can read about them on their glossary page. I will leave the link in the description below. Let's start with the row count in our data frame. With this function, we can check how many records we have in our data frame. Our table row count expectation fails. We can see that the success is false and the actual number of records in this table are 606. However, we expected the row count to be 1000. We will explore some of the tests that make sense for our data set. If you recall, in PyTest, we wrote our own functions to test the assumptions about our data. However, great expectation provides us with built-in functions. And all we have to do is apply these functions to our data set. Just like the previous session, let's start with the primary key column. First of all, we can check if this column exists in the data set. And we can do this with expect column to exist function. And we provided the column name, which is product key. This displays the result of the test and whether it succeeds or fails. Our assumption is true. The column indeed exists in the data set. Next, we find out whether our primary key is unique. This test returns a little more information. We get the status, which is a success, and it gives us the total record count and whether we have missing values and what percentage is missing. On both accounts, it is zero, which is a good sign. Our primary key column looks in good shape. We can perform null test to check if it contains any null values with our next test. And this is a success as well. Our source system is producing some good data. Let's wrap it up with the data type test. We know that this column is of type integer, so we put this assumption to test. Let's execute this and see the result. And this is a success as well. Let's move on to the other columns in our data set. We can check if certain column contains values in a set. For example, we have product line column that groups the product values in four categories. We can perform this test on columns with few distinct values, such as region or product category that contains four to 10 distinct values. And to this function, we provide the column name and the list of expected values. We are checking if product line only contains the following four values. And this assumption is correct. However, we can see that a lot of the values are missing in this column. 225 to be precise, or 37% are missing. Let's perform the same test on the color column. We give it the column name and the list of values. And this returns a failure. We have an unexpected values where two colors are combined in some cases. 
this seems to be an error and we can follow up with the folks who are in charge of the source system to make sure that this error is fixed. Next we test if the column values are between a range. We can perform this test on a numeric column to check if they fall in a certain range. For example, we can check if the safety stock level is between 1 and 1000. Let's go ahead and run this test and this assumption is a success. We can apply the same test on days to manufacture column and we expect this column to be between 1 and 10. Let's go ahead and run and this is true as well. So we are producing products in a timely manner. We can follow up on any outliers to make sure that there's no glitch in the system. We can also check the average of a column to be between a range. For example, we are testing if standard cost mean is between 100 to 500. Let's go ahead and test this assumption and this returns true as well. The actual mean of this column is 434. We can check other required columns and make sure they contain values. For example, we use the product name column in almost all of the reports. Therefore, it is essential that this column contain values. So let's employ a null test on this column and run it. This returned true. That means this column is populated for all records. If some of our columns are sparsely populated, but we still want to check if certain percentage is expected to be populated, then we can use the mostly parameter. In this case, we're checking if the color column is populated with 55% values. This test returns true as 59% of the values are populated or 41% are missing from this column. These are some of the common tests we can utilize from the Great Expectations library. The good part is we can save or export all the tests we ran and use them later on. This comes in handy as we run our data pipelines daily and on each run, we can perform these tests using a config file. We can save all the tests to a local variable for reuse. And also, let's go ahead and save the test results in a JSON config file for later use. We will read the data again from the URL to a great expectations data frame. This time, we will utilize the config variable to run all the tests. If we scroll down, we can see the results of all the tests. We can review them and see which test has failed. Following the similar pattern, let's go ahead and run the test with our config file. This time around, we provide the file name to the validate function. We save the results into a variable. Now we can check the results of all the tests. Using this method, we can inject the great expectation test cases into our ETL pipeline. So on each run, we run these tests against our data set. And we can expand on it, and if anything fails, instead of halting that pipeline, we log the errors or we send notifications to responsible parties. This is all on great expectation and data quality for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.